This is Peter. It says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, that by what? The exceeding great and precious promises. So great and precious promises were given to us whereby those precious promises would cause us to be partakers of the divine nature. So, he's given us precious promises. When our minds are filled with the precious promises, we find ourselves partaking of his life. Mm -hmm. Okay? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, that sounds nice, huh? Listen to what Peter says, though. But if anybody lacks these things, it's because they are blind and cannot see afar off. And then he, decide, then he describes their blindness and that they can't see as afar off as them having forgotten that they were purged from their sin. So he says, if you lack any of these wonderful things that we all think we're supposed to labor and toil to bring forth ourselves. He says, if you've lack any of this wonderful thing, if you lack any of God's life flowing out of you, the reason is because you've forgotten that your sin has already been forgiven. He says you've forgotten. So if you lack any of the, the virtues of God's life, it's because you've forgotten that your sin was forgiven. <laughs> you know, we have the same virtues as Jesus. And um, uh, he, was, he, was he received well and loved and no, he was despised, rejected, spit upon, and, but he still had joy. So if, if I think that I'm going to walk in this world and have that joy and I'm going to be accepted, the disciples weren't accepted either. They were all crucified. And it finally came to me after a while that, you know what? They are looking at me and, and people have said to me, Billy, don't you have any problem? Why are you always happy? I said, I'm not always happy, but I always have joy. So, uh, you know, they are struggling if they don't have him and don't have the fruits of the Spirit. They are trying anything they can do to get it. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. It could be sports. It could be drugs. It could be anything. Golf. Anything. Houses, cars, uh, uh, jobs. Sex. Anything. Confession. And I gotta, and so, Confession. You know, it was like me. I was hopping from thing to thing trying to find out, okay, this is going to make me happy. And then I, 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 would, I would find out it didn't. I, okay, this will, and this will. It ended up that he was the truth and gave me joy. And that was my stopping point. I no longer had the hunt and search. So um, I, now I, I look at them and I, when they reject me or they, they, they it's okay. It's all right. Because I know they're hurting. I was hurting. I did the same thing to other people. I rejected them because they looked too happy. They were too joyful. They were seemed too content. They must not be doing enough for the Lord. Exactly. <laughs> that must be why they're so happy. <laughs> exactly. 